We'll call the meeting to order. Please buy the rise of the pledge of Any further comments? All those in favor? 
red paragraph on page one is farther down in the policy, so that just the first one just continues. Okay. Okay. And make a motion that we uh, approve policy four one one. And policy 2112 as amended. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? This is right. The question about policy 2112. Um, are new administrators provided mentors in, their, in what capacity and for how long they are? Thank you. Great question, Ms. Sarn. Um, our administrators are provided mentors um, for up to two years, and they have a primary and a secondary uh, mentor. Any other questions? Is that information, like, to, could I request of you who the mentor was, or is it the person? Yes, sir. I'll ask Mr. Bird to provide that. That's okay. Case. detracted from my experience. It's a psychology class. And based on what we were doing before and what it's trying to do now to instill these common core standards, um, it's no longer discussion based. And uh, while we still do activities, there's a lot more worksheets. And um, it's really not beneficial um, for some students because now instead of, you know, talking about it and getting um, to understand concepts, it's a lot of worksheets and multiple choice um, and textbook work, so it's not exactly what it used to be, which was more productive for the class as a whole. Midterms um, are all done. I know a lot of seniors enjoy being able to sleep in on days that they didn't have to take an exam. Um, we've been waiting for that a long time. Um, and also, I think midterms are an important <coughs> thing because not only do they reflect the student's work, but it also can be a reflection of the teacher. Um, I know in at least one of my classes this year, um, kids with grades in the 90s um, ended up getting failing grades on the midterm, and kids with 70s got, you know, passing grades, which isn't a reflection of standard classes because everyone does study in, you know, this class. And so I think it's an interesting look at the teacher um, and how their teaching style is coming across in their exams. But, uh, on a positive note, uh, book club, uh, as I mentioned before, we're having a lot of authors come in. Um, we recently read a book, All of Our Yesterdays, and uh, Mrs. Norton has actually set up a Skype um, with the author, so that's really exciting. And we have a couple other authors coming in, and I'll bring them some tea um, next meeting. The Murder Mysteries is Friday and Saturday. Um, tickets are $5 ahead of time, or $7 at the door. Um, it's all student written and it's a great um, just night for everyone. It's a really great show and I encourage you all to attend if you can. On Saturday, the Allstate auditions um, finally come. So students who got into Eastern Regionals will be auditioning to go to Allstate, which is um, everyone in the state competing for to become that one Allstate band. And last year we had two members make it and hopefully we'll keep that up because it's, it's definitely a hard process. 
The jazz band is um, going to a festival at Enrico Fermi High School on uh, February 22nd. And last year we competed and we got a gold medal. We were the only band to receive a gold medal. So we're working hard this year to keep up the good work. And it's been a really productive year so far. Also, on another note, I'm sure you know, but it has reached the students that we are, in fact, out of Staples um, at the high school, and which is kind of funny, I guess, because it's, it's Staples. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that that kind of has been affecting students because when we go to Staple and SA, and we just kind of handed in the paper flip, hopefully. So just letting you know. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Olivia? I've heard that we're out of Staples, so maybe that's uh, limited to a certain area, but uh, if, if there's an issue, the school principal can bring it to my attention and we'll be glad to take care of it. So our uh, athletics have been doing very well recently, hockey qualifying for states recently. Uh, two girls from track also qualified for states. Uh, boys basketball is a few wins away, and uh, I think they'll be able to get it. They're looking good this year. Uh, wrestling, we brought home uh, a couple medals, and we're looking strong this year. So with uh, all our major tournaments coming up for all sports, uh, things are looking good. We should be uh, bringing home the title coming this year. We'll see. It should be good, though. That's great. Anybody have any questions for Aaron? Thank you both very much. Okay, we'll move on to item 4.0, Community Forum. Opportunity for comments on agenda items, potential future agenda items, or general information provided to the board with citizens and community organizations. Is there anyone who would like to address the board this evening? And Ms. Fisher, if I might add, the uh, item 8.0 is a budget workshop, um, which was not originally planned, but was on this agenda. So um, if there were budget comments, this would also be the time for that. Tanya Dana Merrill, 138 Grove Street. Um, these are budget questions. I'm wondering if the board or the public can be provided with some examples of things that may not have been provided to students or teachers this year due to the budget freeze. I'd be intrigued to hear some examples of things that have been a no-go because of funding issues. Um, in reviewing the budget documents this weekend, I know that we budget for teachers to be replaced at a lower level than what the outgoing teacher is making, but we seem to be under budgeting that account. It appears in the last year to two that most teachers that we hire, we are hiring at far over the $69,000 on average that is budgeted. So I'm wondering why we are lowballing that number when we're statistically it shows that we're not really hiring teachers at that rate. So if we're hiring them at Seventy-five or eighty thousand dollars. Why are we not budgeting that in? Because that's obviously what we're looking for. I get you want quality teachers, and I'm all for that. But let's be realistic in our budgeting, because that's why we're getting in trouble. It seems like too with not being able to spend money because we're not budgeting accurately. And finally, um, at the last budget workshop on Monday. It's all awesome that you guys get paper copies of what you're talking about. But when you don't speak about them in detail, those of us in the audience sort of sit there and scratch our heads. And I'm not able to find the extra papers on the website, so I don't know if I'm just missing it. And it, I may miss it on the day that it's actually uploaded, and I just can't find it. But if you could be in more detail when you're discussing your questions, because you're getting the superintendent's getting questions long before the public has any knowledge that you're asking the questions, and so it's a little difficult to follow in the audience and even thereafter when we don't have the same information that you all have. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to post a paper? Lori Majoric, 16 Patricia Drive. 
I don't usually like to speak on topics I don't feel well informed about or have a vested interest in, but after last week's budget workshop, I feel the need to speak in support of Mrs. Buell and the Vernon Elementary School. I actually have no connection to the school, but I see a picture that I think many may be different than some of yours. Last week, some of you expressed concern over the number of students the program is serving. You were looking at the cost of running Vernon Elementary versus the cost of running the other elementary schools, apples to oranges. Thank you to Mr. Hull, who reminded everyone that Vernon Elementary was created as a means of cutting costs to this district by bringing out our outplaced special ed students back to town. And yes, hopefully earning us some tuition paying students as well. I was at the meeting with most of you the night the idea was presented last year. But you were not comparing the cost of running Vernon Elementary to the cost of outplacing these same students, which is apples to apples. If you, the board, cannot remember this, what chance do we have with the taxpayers? Some of you also expressed concern that Mrs. Sherman's time at the cost of her salary is solely dedicated to the administration of Vernon Elementary. What small amount of time I volunteer at Center Road has given me some exposure to our integrated special ed students. While I know nothing of these children in their individual cases, I can tell you with absolute certainty that self-control is an issue with many and outbursts do occur at any time. What leads to an outburst could be as simple as being displeased with a drawing or classwork, the absence of a favorite pair of professional, having to be in class when gym or recess is preferred, another child is reaching, anything. Some children cry, some scream or curse, others kick or hit or pinch or bite or flail, throw themselves against the wall, while others throw furniture. I'm sure there are many other behaviors we cannot even imagine. I have no doubt that Mrs. Sherman's presence would be required in, this situa in these situations, as Mrs. Pogich's presence is sometimes required here at CRS. I could be off base, but this is what I was picturing last week when Mrs. Buell told you she does not want to risk the liability of Mrs. Sherman's duties being divided. You also wanted to know why Mrs. Buell and Mrs. Sherman were not more aggressively recruiting in other districts. The program is now, what, five months old? Special ed students don't always adapt well to new situations. Many tend to be creatures of habit. Why would a parent, much less a parent of a special needs child who is looking for a specific fit for their child, uproot that child for your program that is only five months old? Other than possibly the location, small class size, and Mrs. Buell's reputation, what else right now do you have to offer? What successes do you have to show? And some of you are already questioning the cost effectiveness of the program. So is this a long-term program or not? Special education parents want an established, supportive, successful, secure program to place their children for the duration of their education. Support Mrs. Buell in building that. Support Mrs. Sherman in running that. Then they have something to sell. Then your enrollments and tuitions will come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board this evening? We were at the Chef 119 Charles Street Drive. It actually walked, it wasn't 7 degrees. Um, <laughs> first, I'd just like to second what Lori had to say. For those of you who know me, know that I work for uh, the State of Connecticut Department of Developmental Services and oversee care for about 6,500 6, adults with disabilities and about 2,000 children with disabilities in the North region uh, for the state of Connecticut. And I think that uh, what we're doing is fantastic. And if you build it, they will come, but you have to build it right. Um, so give it some time. And that isn't the reason I got up to talk today. I've been talking about uh, as many places as I can about the, the budget and, and what we need to do and, and how to be supportive, where we need to ask questions. And instead of people engaging with me about that, they engage with me about common what I hear from uh, our citizens here in Berlin is what they've read in a blog, middle, right, or left, not necessarily what they've read directly from the Common Core site, and not what they've heard from uh, the school committee or educators in town. So I'm, I'm asking for some sort of public forums, public demonstration, lectures, information, how it is we're enrolled, how it is it's tied to money, uh, how it is we're developing curriculum or buying curriculum, all of those things are the types of questions, and I'm, a, I'm pretty involved. I have a daughter on the governance council at the high school. I'm on the governance council at the middle school. Mr. Harrison is doing his best to give us that type of information, and we're talking there about uh, some sort of forum this spring where we can talk about some of that. And I know part of it is you're in the midst of it, so explaining what it is while you're building what it is may be hard, but I think parents are really uneasy about that and not focused on 
It's funny stuff that only hear about the media as a comic book. So thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the Hello, Julie Garso, 14 Olsen Drive. Um, it's been quite a while since I've been here, unfortunately, due to different circumstances I haven't been able to make it. But um, I did want to come and kind of share, it's, it's nothing budget related, and I know that's the big talk now, and, and obviously that's of most importance right now. But um, I did want to share something positive. Um, I, especially this time when people are looking at magnet schools, as most of you know, I shared last year that I was pretty concerned about my son going to BCMS. So at this time, we were applying and looking frantically for a magnet school that would be his needs. Um, we found one and applied and got waitlisted. So we did start at BCMS. We were really, really nervous about the transition. Um, his experience at Northeast School was phenomenal. It was, um, he was well taken care of and loved there. And we were really scared to go to really any middle school, not just BCMS. Um, but I have to say that from day one, our experience there has been so positive. Mr. Harrison has been more than available to me. Mr. Gelato, um, the new, one of the new vice principals, helped me um, and worked me through some tears on a couple of days. And um, the team that Justin is on has uh, Mrs. Roy, Ms. Fabian, Ms. Goodman, and Ms. Coy. And I do need to name them all because they have gone above and beyond what I could have ever expected. Justin had a pretty rough transition. That's just the kid he is. He's an anxious kid and worries about things, but he um, feels so supportive there, at probably as much as he did at Northeast. And that's really, really saying a lot. So I really want to commend BCMS for what they're doing over there, um, his wonderful team of teachers. I mean, I've had Mrs. Roy call me at home to talk to me about how Justin's doing or concerns she has. Um, with his first market period, he made high honors, and he definitely is being challenged there. I know that was one of the concerns. Um, he's a very bright kid, and he's definitely there pushing him. So um, I know that I was glad to see Mr. Harrison at the last PTO meeting. I know he's going around to the different elementary schools, and we had talked about doing this earlier, and while well, people are, are looking at different resources. And, um, so I was glad to see that happening, and I know that they're going to have an event Wednesday as a week, um, and it's a great way to, to sell the school. It does have a lot to offer, and I just I won't go on anymore other than to say um, I think they're doing a great job, and we're really really pleased. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? Okay, thank you. I will um, close citizens board, and we'll move on to item five point zero, general business five point one. School Improvement Plan for Maple Street School. Right, you all have a, um, a copy. You saw the other uh, six schools, uh, seven schools rather, in uh, December. And uh, Mrs. Gandalf's school improvement team, or building level team, um, did finish their plan um, based on, uh, on the available data that they had. And uh, they're just a little behind uh, what they, uh, in their timeline. Um, they also, on 5.2, uh, presented a uh, summary of the school governance team. So those, both of those reports were given for the other six schools, including Vernon Elementary School, uh, last month in December. Uh, Mrs. Gandalf is here, so she'd be happy to answer questions. Um, we didn't present the others, we allowed you to read and ask questions if you had any. Does anybody have any questions? Mrs. Arnold. I'm intrigued by the Character Education Committee. Can you explain to me what the charge of that committee is? I'm sorry, I couldn't see my eyes. Character Education Committee? Yes, we um, instituted our positive behavior support program um, within the school so that all students know exactly what the expectations are. And um, we have built in a system of rewards and very clear expectations for if we expect respect in the school, what does that look like in the lunchroom, in the lavatory, in the hallway, et cetera? So we've been, we would like to develop the lessons around those 
character pieces, if you will, um, for classroom teachers to teach and students to model. We have a student council team and a student leadership team that has now come together and we will start monthly meetings actually this week. And we're hoping to have them model some of these character traits um, as well as the adults, the school psychologist and the school social worker, whatever, with all classes. So, in order to move forward with anything the committee decides to do, that being an example, uh, we would like to be sure there's a good representation of, of people there. My point was you don't have a committee yet, but you have one teacher and a couple parents. Well, how can you move forward? Because I have asked, I have sent the letter out again to parents and to, to, to ask for more people to step forward. With your busy schedules. Mm -hmm. do, do, uh, do you know when? You, did you give them a deadline to get back to you? Um, next Friday, February, whatever the whatever the deadline is. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? <coughs> Thank you very much. Good luck getting people to join the committee. Okay, item five point three. First reading of the proposed new policy 2001. No action required. Is there anyone who would like to discuss this or ask questions about it? Did this come from Kay? Yes, it did. Just asking this as a, I guess, procedural question. We seem to get many other policies that we just receive and vote on. What makes this one so different that we're getting a first reading? This one's new. We do not have this policy. So it's a new versus modified. Right. When we have a new policy, we have to review it and then vote on it at the next one. Thank you. Anything, any other questions on it? Okay. We will move on to item 5.4, the facilities committee meeting report. The committee uh, met earlier this evening, and uh, with Mr. Kleinens and the superintendent, uh, Mr. Paul, and discussed the capital expenditure plan in, in some detail. The, uh, Work that's, that is uh, contemplated on roof repair, for instance, and um, implementation of uh, the changeover from using uh, heating oil to uh, gas 
is a major endeavor in the world of art. And as a result, we uh, felt that the uh, plan is moving forward. Uh, it, it, it goes over a six year time frame in a planned and methodical way to do what uh, can be done to address the capital needs of the various buildings that we have um, in a logical way. So that's uh, all I can tell you at this point, unless you'd like detail of what some of the several items cost. But uh, I guess at this point the committee was satisfied with, with uh, the presentation and feels that we're on a good uh, plan to address the capital needs of, of the school system. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the capital improvement plan. Like second that. Um, any discussion or questions or comments? Sorry. I'm not second guessing, I'm just looking for some clarification. Um, at um, Lake Street School, there's a main repair issue, and that's being claimed to Can you tell me a little bit about the way the machine is going to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, school building advisory commission we tried to address that through the school building project it's not an easy problem to solve correct and, and that's it's been under study for several years because of this 
So, well, it's like, pardon me, essentially, I think, when we're doing rooms and other things, we can maybe incorporate some things into it. Uh, but it is, it is something that was, it has been on the radar for a while. Yeah, and, and several attempts have been made to correct it without, without success. And, and that's why I just yeah. wanted to, it hasn't been gone unaddressed. They've that's done many point. attempts to address it. And I think what I hear is you're going to try and do it again, along with some other projects that may go together to make it work. Right. Perfect. Thank you for the clarification. And the other question that I had is, do we have out of this capital plan a number uh, as far as what we're going to send to Town Hall for capital improvement uh, this year? Um, the board approves the plan, so as the plan, whether or not it is funded is another question altogether. So we have put estimates in, uh, in the column on the right as to what each project costs, but the, um, this is a six-year plan. Um, oftentimes plans don't get funded, uh, and not all the items get funded, and so next year you Buys the plan, and there are other priorities. Uh, there is not enough today in our capital non recurrent to cover everything that is in the 1415, so the board will have to make some decisions as the uh, year goes on. Thank you. Any other questions? Cesar? A question about the hallway panels at Lake Street School. There's a lot of issue. Yeah. Well, it's not a lead issue. There, there's problems with the panels and, and the framing of the panels that needs to be addressed. But it's definitely the panels are have lead paint on them. Okay. But it's not a lead issue. Okay. It's a panel issue. It's a. Well, and I saw tested positive for lead. But right. They have lead. Okay. But it doesn't mean that there's an issue. Okay. And at the central office, the, the um, window treatments. Um, can you just uh, explain to me security, the, the, why that's a security issue? The, uh, the window treatments under central office are a district, it's a district-wide um, repair. It's not for central office, it's for the district. And it's to repair uh, window treatments that are not working properly. So uh, in the case of a, um, of a security drill, when you have to close your blinds, um, that money is to get those to work. So, uh, 
So if anyone is interested in that, uh, they absolutely need more people. And that's on the 17th of May? Uh, the district, um, yes, I believe it is. Thank you. Other reports? Mrs. Bush. Yes, I attended the Northeast School PTO on January 14th. Um, one of the highlights of, of the evening was Mr. Harrison coming to the school to talk to the parents about the programs at the middle school. Uh, he had a wonderful presentation to the parents that were there. Um, he showed them how the schedule worked and um, basically was able to answer any questions that the parents had. And I felt it was extremely informative and he invited them all personally to come to the, um, the uh, night of exploration at the middle school. And um, then they had their business meeting, which was business that uh, the one in December had to be uh, canceled because of a snowstorm. So there was a lot of business that, you know, that was going on. Um, they're looking at the fundraisers and uh, different activities for, this, for the school. Uh, I don't have any specific dates right now, but there are coupon cards available for $5 if anyone would like one, I know. Parents will be selling them. Thank you very much. Any other Mr. Speaking of BCMS PTO, on uh, 16th we had a meeting. On uh, January 29th, BCMS um, we had a meeting of uh, exploration to showcase all that BCMS has to offer to um, prospective 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th grade students. Um, also on Veterans Day, there was an assembly um, that was held. Um, 35 family members. Ceremony and breakfast. And finally, there was a magazine drive that had a very good return. And then also, the PTO was looking into some possible fundraisers for the spring, which might be two months into uh, something at a local restaurant. Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Kemp? I attended recently a PTO president's meeting, and uh, two of the major topics discussed had to do with a promotion of the Vernon public school system and basically in competition with the United schools and how best to project a positive image of the school system and the assets that we have to offer and ways to go about that. And the other major presentation was done by Alan Slobody who came and talked about the uh, Vernon Community Network and how there are no less than 40 organizations in that, or in that group, and uh, plans for a community network fair, and uh, the need to have volunteers for the various organizations within that group. Dr. Conway was also present, and they also have some comments about that meeting. Okay. Do you have any comments? Uh, we actually started to talk about Vision 2025, um, which the board will have a uh, presentation on it your next meeting, and uh, just the, the infancy of, uh, of where we need to go in the next 10 years, and uh, galvanizing uh, that support, uh, getting a plan that's accepted by all different uh, stakeholders in the town, and uh, so it's a very exciting, uh, exciting process. Um, additionally, we talked about uh, pulling everyone together from the community conversation, the people who were there last time and others who are interested to give everyone an update, uh, the three things that really came out of that were the mentoring, uh, which uh, Mr. Kemp just spoke about, uh, that uh, the Youth Service Bureau is having a fair. The, um, what was the second one? Losing my, losing my mind. Marketing. Uh, but, pardon? Marketing. Marketing. Thank, thank you, Ms. Bajor. Um, Ms. Bajor was there as well. Um, it was uh, marketing, uh, which is what uh, Mr. Kemp mentioned as well, and then the third was other, and that was really talking about academic standards and excellence, and that's where the vision will come into, so that will be a kickoff for that, so exciting. That's good. Anyone else have any reports? Mr. Cole. I don't have a report, but I just think, you know, um, this is budget season, and I think this board should uh, say a big thank you to all the PTOs for everything they do. Uh, for the students of Vernon, especially, you know, when we're in tight times like budget freezes and whatnot, they do a lot for the kids of Vernon. I think the board <coughs> acknowledges that. All right, I just have.
have uh, two reports. Uh, Santa Rosa School, I was unable to go to their December meeting, but um, Mr. Harrison went to that, and I understand that one went very well, and people were really glad to hear all that he had to say, and I believe they're looking forward to the evening of exploration on Wednesday. Um, they also are starting, Mr. DeBellis is working with the student council as part of their PBIS program. They're, they've gotten the book, Have You Filled Your Bucket Today? And the fifth grade students are reading them, or older students are reading them to the younger students, I believe, and promoting acts of kindness. And I guess every time you do an act, act of kindness, you fill your bucket, but if you do something that's not nice, you are a bucket dipper. And uh, <laughs> I'm really interested to see how it goes. But it sounds, it sounds great. I know, I know other kids in other schools are doing it, and they say it's very successful. So. Actually, this is Mr. Hyde, that their students, when they do have to find this, are filling up the black bucket and the main bucket. So you can see how much that's filling up. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then we have the And then also, the fifth graders um, sang at the Wolfpack game. I believe that was in January. And um, they were so excited. They were on the Jumbo Tron and everything else. And I believe they were invited back for next year. So they obviously did a great job. So that's great. Uh, obviously, a good uh, show a good example of our school system. And the last thing I have to report on is the School Wellness Council. We only meet every other month now because each individual school, um, with the help of the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, has their own committee now. And then they report back to us what's going on in their schools. So some of this news is old, but I'm just going to get it out there. Skinner Road School had their turkey trot in November, and they had over 30 people show up for that. BCMS has had uh, their family fun night, which they said was very well attended, where they had volleyball and basketball and, and all sorts of and They played week games and so on. And the Arctic Splash, which we know we've talked about, that Dr. Conway even went in. Um, they made $2,500, which will support 33 students to go to the summer camp this summer. Our next meeting is not until, well, it's actually in February, but I can't go to that one, so the next one I can go to is in April. That's all I have. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to item 6.0 to review and update the Board of Education calendar. Anybody have any questions or issues, corrections to the calendar? Item 7.0, opportunity for Questions from the press on agenda items? Anyone have any questions, Mr. Kennedy? Any questions? Anybody else? Okay. okay, item 8.0, our budget workshop. 8.1, 2014-15 budget workshop. Pre-K, the state is paying that this year. 
In addition, we have just heard from um, the Connecticut International Baccalaureate Academy. They have not sent us an invoice, and we have just heard from them that they are not charging this year. Um, we're still investigating that, but um, because it does come to $34,000. And so um, if they do not charge this year, um, then we will be actually under budget uh, what we budgeted for, which is very nice. If they do, then we're just about $10,000. So that's a very good thing. Uh, it's, they have not sent us an invoice, and that was the message we received from them. So I'm looking for something a little more solid um, than just a, a message. Um, you can see the students there. Uh, the second was how many students have been accepted into the agricultural education program at Rockville High School. Last year, we had 29 who applied and 25 who were accepted, and two of those 25 chose different schools. Uh, in addition, this fall, so that was last year, this fall an additional 12 applied and 6 were accepted. So um, from, these are students from outside the district. For 13-14, they have recruited, 27 have applied, 23 have been accepted. There are still 4 who are um, completing paperwork and 5 are, are waiting for their applications. They have asked for them. So that would be a total of uh, 20, uh, 36, excuse me, altogether who would have been uh, applied. The next was a question of what is the cost per pupil versus other towns, especially in our DERB. Um, that, is an, that is Exhibit A, it is a legal size document. So it looks a little bit uh, like this. You can locate that. The, um, you can see that uh, the national, the net current expenditure per pupil for DERG, which is our, our DERG, there are 15, is that correct, uh, 15 uh, districts. We are six from the lowest uh, in terms of what we pay per pupil. Our uh, per pupil cost for 12-13 was $13,449 and 70 cents. Uh, you can see, in contrast, the lowest was Bristol, and they paid 12,479, so just under a thousand dollars less. And the highest is Bloomfield, which is 18,444 uh, dollars, which is over 5,000 or just 5,000 dollars higher. Um, I had uh, also asked in this if we could uh, rank these or sort these by net current expenditure per pupil. And so the rest of the document are all of the towns uh, listed, and uh, they are from the lowest cost per pupil to the highest cost per pupil. Um, you can see the lowest in the state is our neighbor, our next door neighbor, Ellington, at $11,233. And the highest is Cornwall at $25,750. So there's quite a range. Uh, we did highlight it throughout that list um, the schools in Derg uh, G. And so I would say we're in the bottom uh, third or the lowest third of our Derg. And I would also say we are in the lowest third of the state. Um, maybe even lower than that, might be lower uh, of bottom quarter. The next question was about uh, our health savings account uh, for last year and this year. Uh, there is a chart here. There was uh, a change between uh, fiscal year 13 to fiscal year 14, so last year to this year. Uh, 65 people left uh, the POS, which is the, the, um, the, the regular plan uh, that you would uh, all be familiar with, and 72 people were added into the HSA. So there was a change from last year to this year of 72 people uh, in favor of the HSA and uh, 65 people fewer in the point of service plan. Uh, what does the Board of Education spend on the Board of Education? Uh, that is on page four. And you can see uh, very clearly this is what is in the current budget. So there is a half a secretary salary and. That person does many, many more things. I would say it's not a 0.5 at this point, but that person supports the board in 
preparing board packets, not the, the uh, information, but in the copying and, and all of that, the budgets, uh, the budget binders, etc. Um, there are clerical salaries, so any time a board meeting is filmed or is recorded, uh, and there is a uh, recorder here that is uh, paid for that. The legal services, that is uh, the board, the, the attorney, Fred Dorsey, is, is not the administrator's attorney uh, or central office attorney. That attorney belongs to the board and works for the board, and that's why that uh, line item is here. Uh, we have the administrator's contract coming up next year and two other contracts coming up next year. Um, so we've uh, decreased that a little bit. Other professional uh, services, we've got the CAVE policy update, other training that the board has, and CREC minority recruitment. Conference fees uh, would include any CREC fees, CAVE, um, and that's our membership as well, uh, CAVE convention, uh, CAVE uh, new board member packets as well. American School Board Journal uh, that all of you should be receiving. If you're not, please let me know, and we will make sure that, that does happen. Uh, and uh, and then other supplies and materials, so awards, uh, the name plates that are in front of you, etc. The um, next couple of questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Just sorry. 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 Thank you. I realize that's a very small amount of money, but I was just wondering, what is correct by money? Um, we are required by law to have a um, minority recruitment policy, which we do, and we are required to uh, encourage minorities to apply um, to Vernon. This is a hiring policy? Yes, oh. yes. And so we, we certainly, I'm sorry, that isn't clear, is it? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and yes, and CREC uh, provides that service, and so we, we join. Thank you, I apologize. Um, there are a series of maintenance questions which I will admit that I did not answer, and so I would ask um, Mr. Kleinhans uh, or Mr. Palooza, who did answer those, if they would just come forward very quickly and uh, answer those questions.
The next question, uh, number 10, have we fully implemented the wireless system at Rockville High School or are we still working out the bugs? If it's fully functional, why did we not include the wireless network at VCMS in the budget? Um, the wireless system at RHS is fully functional. Uh, there's always adjustments to be made, but it is completely uh, functional at the high school. The wireless network at VCMS uh, was brought to the board's technology committee. Uh, it was, I uh, want to say, $95,000, and so that was uh, my choice not to put it in the budget to bring forward to you, but I did uh, share that with you as one of those items that was requested. We certainly, uh, the, the technology committee was very uh, supportive of that. Uh, we know if we put wireless in the middle school, then we can use the wireless nodes that are there in the elementary schools to strengthen what they have. Uh, what we will be doing for testing this year is moving uh, the wireless nodes, the small uh, ones, uh, uh, and, uh, and moving them from school to school to strengthen uh, the, the wireless access in certain areas. Um, so the technology committee, I can certainly speak to that if they wish, but that is um, that is where we are right now. In in terms of the inventory of computers and their ages, uh, we did we do have a complete inventory uh, that was part of our budget last year, and so um, we do you can see the numbers. Uh, we have uh, 373 desktops and 286 laptops, all zero to five years old. We have 737 desktops that are 6 to 10 years old and another 70 laptops. And then 782, that's, that's got to be wrong. Yes, no one is right. 782 desktops that are more than 10 years old. You can see why I said that has to be wrong. Um, but it's right. Is that correct, Mr. Burke? Do you want to speak to that? Go ahead. Mr. Chair. Uh, as you see from the notes, there's some of the equipment on there, for instance, an Apple IIe from 1985, which is a part of the inventory. I believe those are just sitting on a shelf somewhere at the end and we'll probably dispose of. So these, you know, that 10 year plus um, number of 782, more likely probably about half that amount is in active use. possibility of a four-day uh, school week. Um, I will have a fuller, a fuller, is that good? A, a more full answer for you on, on Wednesday. Um, I have done uh, a lot of research. I probably have an inch uh, stack of documents here. Uh, I did discover that there is one district in Massachusetts that is exploring this. Uh, the board did give uh, a, um, a go-ahead to do that. Um, the, biggest stumbling block for that district, which is Mohawk Trail Regional School District in Western Massachusetts. Uh, the biggest is the same that we would have, and that is that we are required to attend school for 180 days. And so in order to attend for fewer days, uh, because we were adding hours, um, there would have to be legislative action. Um, so that is probably the biggest stumbling block. So um, I'm going to give a, a report on Wednesday. If you want it to be much more thorough, then I would expect that the board is going to commit to start lobbying to get rid of the 180 days. Um, and so I, I will give you, in, in general, uh, what they think the cost savings might be. And there's, you only save in transportation and utilities, and that's if you close the schools down completely. So, um, but I do have, I do have more details. Um, so, otherwise, if we have 180 days, we're going completely year-round school, four day weeks as well. But I will be providing more information on Wednesday. Okay, any other questions? This is Bush. Uh, going back to the computers, the 10 year plus machines, you said there's probably about half of the machines um, that are 10 years plus that are actually being used right now. What I'd like to know is in what capacity are they teacher computers? Are they slave computers, like just to run a word processing or something like that? What what capacity would they be used in? And um, even a little more dated, I'd like to know how many laptops and desktops are within one to two years old.
our administration to come up with a list of possible items that we could cut because I, I believe, and this is my opinion, I don't know if the rest of that, I think that a 4.79% increase is too high and um, I, I don't see it going anywhere with the, town, with the town, so I think we need to consider some cuts. So I was hoping that she had prepared a list and we could go through it and see if any of those appeal to us as possible cuts. Um, 
the, we have eliminated a couple of 1.5 administrative positions, if you recall, the two C positions and the half-time assessment position. And so this is a 0.3 curriculum position that supports those positions, so that would not be needed. At Rockville High School, unfortunately, there was a, a math teacher vacancy, and so since it was not a permanent person in there, we did not pull it over when we created the budget. So I would ask that you add that back in. Mr. Uh, Rocket was uh, quite concerned about that. In um, pupil personnel, there is a position that was budgeted twice that we have found, so that would certainly be something you could take. Um, the other areas are for discussion. Uh, if we are going to reduce um, seven teachers, would be a reduction of just about $400,000. You mentioned last week that you had looked, or we had presented you with class sizes at the middle school and at the high school. Um, they're very favorable. And so uh, the suggestion would be that these teachers would come from those two areas. Um, last year, one of the things the board did uh, prior to having the budget increase was uh, a reduction of uh, secretarial health and uh, paraprofessional clerical health and one library assistant. So those are all discussion items that we would ask that you make a decision on. And then there's the risk accounts. Um, projected vacancy rate, we did that last year, so that would be when there is someone not in the position, we save, uh, we save funding until we hire in the position, but that is a risk. That might not happen uh, for teachers. There isn't a time when there's no one in the position, you're paying someone uh, to do the job. Uh, futures education, right now we would put 50000 Again, that's a risk. Uh, we're not sure where that savings will come from, whether it will come from a reorganization of, of the uh, administration, whether it would come from uh, transportation, from out of district. Um, but that is, so that is again a risk number. So this uh, list does come up to $1 million, uh, which is uh, what... I was thinking to come down below 3%, it's 2.81%. Um, I think that would be, uh, that's where I was hoping to come in at the beginning, but uh, just was unable to do so. So there, there's uh, some things here that are definites. There are some things uh, that you could certainly do this evening, some things I would prefer that you wait until Wednesday evening, and some things that you can uh, choose to take a, a risk on and for discussion. Does anybody want to start? Questions? I'm not going to make a motion yet on any of this, but I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Uh, one has to do with the magnet school uh, cost to us when a student returns. When they do so mid-year, what is the, how does the math work out? Is this prorated to the month, or do we have to pay the entire year tuition? How does this work out? Yeah, my understanding is by the month. Okay, so that's a universal agreement with all of these locations. Yes. We don't have to go back and forth with each one more at a time. All right, thank you. A question about the um, the FTEs, the teacher um, reduction. Would that be done through attrition, through the retirements? Um, or would we have to lose actual bodies? Uh, right now we have 17 retirements, and so certainly we would try to do that. We look at everyone's certification. So if you're certified in several areas, uh, you might not be teaching, your assignment might not be in your favorite place, but you'd still have a job. So that would be our goal, is to make sure that there were no people walking out the door. Exactly. I do have a question, but it's not specific to this particular sheet. Um, central Office or Central Administration, item 51111. There is a $140,000 increase, and then 51115, there seems to be a $188,000 decrease. There's no budgeted numbers from the previous year in there. So I mean, just 
trying to understand where this increase is at. Um, the increase is the movement of Mrs. Buell's position. She's now Director of Human Resources, or Director of Personnel, which includes Human Resources, and so she can no longer be in a union. And so she was moved out of uh, one area and into another. I know that uh, it would be, we would like to see a decrease um, consistent with that. However, that would be in this year, that, this year's budget. So, um, but Mrs. Sherman was uh, added into that to Vernon Elementary School. So her um, principal salary was added in. That, that reflects um, the reduction of 1.5 administrators plus um, Mrs. Moving, uh, Mrs. Buell was moved up to the other place. Medicare account by ten thousand and Social Security account by ten thousand. Is there a second? Mr. Poole? Second. Any discussion or comments? All those in favor? Unanimous. These figures, uh, I want to make sure I understand what you said earlier, that the 75,000, for instance, is that the 13% uh, figure? Are you talking about the workers' compensation? The three, the three, no. The, the 70, uh, I'm sorry, the PPO, prescription drug, and dental, you said each of those three, I think, were 13%. That, that is correct. So it's a 2% drop from 15 to 13% in each of those three lines. Right. And I, I move that we reduce the, the budget by the 75,000, the 20,000, and the 2,000 for each of those, uh, for those uh, three accounts. Uh, appreciate a second. Second. We just asked uh, Mr. McCarley about the comfort level with the risk of reducing those to the 13%. To the chair, uh, I wouldn't go any further than 13%. I think that's bringing this down as far as I, I would be comfortable recommending to the board, um, but not any farther than that. And that's based on, we started at 23% for a no bid renewal uh, with Connecticut. Our insurance broker had come back and looked at our experience. Unfortunately, our experience, experience experience has been high, especially in the last quarter. That's been our highest experience, so that doesn't bode well for us at the negotiating table. Um, but we are fortunate to have been with the town and hopefully get some leverage from that our process. So at the end of the day, I think that uh, we could potentially go down to 13% to provide a revised bid of 15%. Um, and then there were any heard we were going out to bid. So they moved a little bit, and so uh, if uh, their bid results, the bid results come back uh, favorable um, at 13 percent, I would be comfortable uh, with that. And if um, if they don't, we may need to switch carriers to get us to that 13 percent. So uh, somebody will come in and it may not be our current carrier. Thank you. So based on that, I will support this motion.
So the motion is to reduce the substitute teacher in 10,000 custodial maintenance, uh, 10, the secretarial overtime, 6, the magnet school tuition by 10, the telecommunications, 12,500, the copy or rental lease, 10,000, and the uh, curriculum department, 8,562, which is second. Do we have any questions on that? This is our. Um, through you to Mr. Picaro, please. Was the custodial overtime account um, added real quickly? It looked like $68,000 in that neighborhood. $10,000 seems like a very minimal uh, impact on, on that. Um, I, I'm wondering if we can't. Do a little more with that account. To the chair, I, I would caution not to move farther than the 10,000 on this account. Uh, we have had instances, especially with weather and personal events in the schools, where we have to have mandatory overtime. Uh, I think where we could possibly offset some of those costs is in the area of the school use account, so we can continue to have our schools be used for various events, and hopefully on an increasing basis. Could potentially offset some of those costs on that side of the uh, balance sheet, but on this side, I, I would caution them to go far away. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Stanton. Mr. Chair, is the Secretary Curriculum Department position a elimination or? Yes, it's a point three position, 10 hours a I don't have a question about the um, telecommunications and comp copier and rental lease pending bid results. How confident are you on those? To the chair, very confident on those numbers. Um, I think, the, uh, as Dr. Conway had said, we're, we're just wrapping up the copier uh, uh, rental lease. And we are uh, moving toward very briefly, as we talked about uh, prior to finance and committee meetings and board meetings, we're going towards document stations, following printing. So we're going to be implementing some innovative technology that should hopefully decrease our, our total cost for toner, for example, and paper and supplies. So I'm, I'm confident on the copy of rental lease, as Dr. Conway said on the telecommunications. We, we were hopeful that that process would be moving a little bit faster so we can realize even additional savings, which I believe we will, but I think initially for the fiscal year 15 coming up, uh, until that bid goes out and until we get the results back, and this is something we're doing jointly with the town, it's, it's safe to say 12500 uh, would be a good place to be. And the reason why we're going to do that even before the bid results come back is because we already are aware uh, from prior discussions of uh, some audit work that we've done internally to cancel some lines that will save us, uh, give us some immediate cost savings in the next fiscal year. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to reduce from the substitute teachers down to the secretary of those in favor? That's unanimous. Anyone else? This is our... I'd like to make a comment. I um, think it's necessary to support the reduction of staff, especially given the class size numbers that we were getting in between DCMS and, and high school. I'm wondering if we reduce teacher eliminate positions, can we direct the superintendent to eliminate them in those two, to consider eliminating them in those two areas before any place else, number one. And number two, I, I, I would not feel comfortable supporting the reduction of teachers unless we're going to do something with administrators as well. Um, and I would ask that the superintendent look into reduction of administrators and my first suggestion would be obvious and it would be um, Mr. Wilder's position. I know we discussed it but um, so kind of twofold. I, I think we do need to reduce teachers but I would not feel comfortable doing that without reducing administration as well. Yes, um, we did reduce 1.5 administrators in my proposed budget so we have certainly done that. Mr. 
Mr. Stinson. I just had an additional question. Uh, Center Road School, uh, line item 51113, uh, there's a 14% increase. And all I do see that there's a, a couple of new positions or FTE increases. I'm struggling to find why it ended up being $283,000 in increase. Um, two of the positions are the kindergarten teachers that we removed from the Alliance District Grant and put in there. Um, additionally, uh, we moved a teacher from Skinner Road the day before school opened to Center Road. So that didn't appear in this year's budget, so it would appear as a big jump in next year's budget. And I think Skinner Road's actually is a negative um, in that particular line item. Thank you. Where's the line room system? At the high school. Didn't we didn't we struggle with library last year? Yes. yes. Okay. That that was on, uh, you eliminated that and then when the million dollars came back to the board, that was one of the positions we put back in. I'd like to talk about the math teacher at the high school now. Uh, it seems that the, the position is there. It wasn't a, a lot. It wasn't uh, accounted for in the budget correctly. Is that my understanding? Okay. I move approval of 54437 for the inclusion in the budget of the math teacher at RHS. Second. I move the uh, $9,700 uh, reduction of the uh, professional account. Second. Can I ask exactly what that is? Not affiliated or paraprofessional? It should, shouldn't be uh, paraprofessional acting similar to that. Is this in the next step program? This has been in a Maple Street line item, and um, it was money diverted to the, uh, I forget the title, Star Street. But, so when we created that position for her, she had her own line item, but this, the first year, a couple years ago, was, was some of the money we used for that, but we no longer need a separate line item for that, so it's just a, uh, a community school right, director. All those in favor? That's unanimous. This is our. Can I just ask through you where, where we're at, Mr. Picardo? Uh, my computer's broken, so I'm having to do this. We actually have to add one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are at a reduction to the chair of $140,290. That's <laughs> uh, all of the reductions plus the addition of the math teacher at this point in time. A reduction of one hundred forty thousand two hundred million dollars. All right, Mr. Kemp. I move a reduction of three hundred ninety-three thousand fifty-nine, sixty-seven thousand three hundred sixty, and twenty-four thousand and twelve thousand, respectively, for the four uh, counts listed. Is there a second? 
we move to divine question? Well, it's not seconded yet, so it's not a motion to divide. I don't mind if we do it. Did somebody I'll second for the purpose of discussion. I'll second the motion for the purpose of discussion. Okay. Which one? Yours. Okay. Okay, so now. So there's a motion for all four of them. Now we'll have a discussion. Now we'll move to divide. Question, please. I'll second. I'm just not sure I'm ready tonight to arbitrarily cut this much staff without a little more understanding of the impact. I know we've said we're going to look at the retired teachers, uh, and I'm certainly not arguing we have to make some, some sacrifices. Uh, I just would like a little more of a concrete plan if we could. professionals are, that are suggested um, are clerical only. They're not the class. And where were the clerical, where are those positions? At Lake Street Center. Now mind you, the other principals would like the same job. Uh, regarding the teacher cut, uh, the teacher reduction, Dr. Conway, if, if we were to ask you to provide more details to where or, or what a plan would look like for that reduction, is that something you'd be able to show us, let's say by Wednesday? We're, we're attempting that, yes. I believe we will. Okay, so if we didn't take action on this, we'd have more details and requests. So I, I personally would prefer to see us wait on that until Wednesday if, if we can, pending that additional information. So I would make a motion that we table that particular item with the teachers' seven FTEs until Wednesday. It's, it's, the motion is in place. It was it was divided. So 
you, in the chair simply brings up the issue uh, one at a time. One of them is tabled in any particular order. If the, if the desire of the group is to act on the paraprofessional one, I think I just heard, mm -hmm. then you just, and that's a little low one. So we'll take a vote on the paraprofessional clerical, reducing the budget by 23,000 dollars. All those in favor? Um, any other questions before we... Mr. Kent? Well, that leaves the library system uh, to be voted on. Um, I was just going to say, to be official, I'd like to make a motion that we table the action on the secretaries until Wednesday. I just want to speak to the uh, maintainer painter and the painting supply at the high school, uh, in the district. Uh, a couple years ago, we spent a lot of money bringing these buildings up to the current level. We've been short a painter for many years. We got the painter for a couple years, and then he moved on to another position. I think if you look at the buildings, you will see there is still a need to have a painter in district, and uh, I think. The other issue that we run into if we don't have a painter in the district and we want to do any contract painting, we run into issues with our union. We can't do contracted painting if we don't have a painter on our uh, staff. So I would not support reducing by a, a painter and I would look to see if there's another alternative to that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also speaking of the painter, is it a possibility to split the cost to two painters? The position is articulated clearly in the contract and the salary for that is there, so it would involve negotiations. So it, is it possible? Absolutely. Um, but I can't say that it's possible today. It would involve neg contract negotiations in order to create two positions that were, if you want to split it, then it would have the cost. I'd like to look in, have that look into, if possible. Mr. Kim. I'd like to bring up the projected vacancy rate and the Futures Education LLC by moving the reduction of 12179 and 50000 under the Futures uh, items. Does someone explain what the projected vacancy rate is, please? <coughs> when a uh, person leaves the district, um, generally you then advertise and uh, go out and interview and, and all of that. So there is a vacancy between the time the person leaves and the next person comes in. Um, if it's a teacher, obviously we can't leave kids without a teacher, so you're, you've got a sub in there, so it it's not as much. So um, this does happen. Um, we try not to have vacancies. Uh, this year we've actually saved because it, uh, we're in a hiring freeze, and so we have had those vacancies. Um, but right now we do we have an uh, opening, for example, in the central office, and so we are between, um, and that would be the vacancy. Great. Thank you. And I, I had a second question. My 
you all had a futures education, obviously, it predates me returning to the board, so I'm not entirely sure what the deliverable there is. Uh, but it seems to me that $50,000 is kind of a nebulous number, and I, I guess I question how strongly you feel about that particular number. Um, actually, we contracted with uh, Futures or asked them to come in uh, just around the first of the year they came in. So um, so this is new and they are uh, looking at our practices in special education. So they're looking at classroom practices, they're looking at uh, how we're organized administratively, they are looking at our out-of-district uh, placement, they're looking at IEPs, how they have that uh, level of confidentiality. So. Uh, to see our, our, you know, how organized are we, are we following the IEPs, are there other options. Um, they're also looking at transportation, which is generally where they find uh, savings uh, to see uh, how we can do that. Um, that and what's the other area that they find savings out of district? I think I've covered it all. You have. Okay. To the chair, Medicaid. Oh, Medicaid reimbursement. Thank you so much. <coughs> So yes, it's a very nebulous number. That's why it says risk accounts there. If the board approves that dollar amount, it will come out of the special education budget? It, it will have to, or wherever it would come out. And we can't reduce it. We would have to take it out of the bottom line somewhere. Um, and if the special ed account is short, then obviously that has to come from somewhere else. Suppose. Uh, is that the group that has been um, looking into our Medicare reimbursement? No, that's um, CompuPlan, thank you. That's CompuPlan, no, that they just take care of Medicare reimbursement. These, this is a group that's providing us with an analysis of all of our special education services. Um, we, we've been questioned over the last couple of years. That, that's an area that's over 20% of our budget. And so I think it, it behooves us to do our due diligence to truly look at what we're spending, how we're spending it, how can we uh, service our students better and do it in a more cost-effective way. Um, I have a question. Is this the company that when we hired them, they guarantee they won't charge us a fee unless they're able to save us $40,000? Uh, no, they, they want to save us their fee. And their fee is $25,000. Oh. And we're paying that over two years, half this year, half next year. Thank you. Um, reduce the, how does how would what would the impact be of reducing that fifty thousand? Is what I <coughs> get at to our to our budget? No, to our services or to improve the, the budget. We're reducing that. And is that going to cost us any of their services or anything? Of futures education right. services? No, those are the savings we're expecting. Okay. Some of it in transportation, some of it in Medicaid. Uh, so it wouldn't be one, any one line item. And as Ms. Arndt said a few moments ago, would it come out of special education? Well, right now, that, that is where it would come out of probably some out of Medicaid, some out of transportation, both for special ed. Okay. But um, in the end, of course, if we incur costs in those areas, we have to pay those costs. And so the, the funding would have to come from another line item. We would have to transfer money over. Any other questions or comments? Okay, there's a motion on the floor to reduce the budget by 12179 for projected vacancy rate and $50,000 for futures education. All those in favor? Through the chair, we have approved a reduction, a total reduction of $226,388, bringing our new budget to $52,687,371. That's a difference of $2,192,584 over the current fiscal year, or a 4.34%.
to better understand the, the position of the town and the board, uh, is in, uh, I'd like to ask about the net current expenditure for people list. That was obtained, and it's very helpful to have this. Were we able to uh, obtain this particular breakout? It was not in the town's annual report. Or no, um, the, for 12 13, that would come out early enough, I don't think, in the town's report. Okay. They, they should be 11, 11 12 should be in the town's report, but not 12 13. Unfortunately, it would be a year behind. It would be helpful if we could get data from the town that reflects our debt per capita. I would be interested to see where we rank uh, amongst the towns in the state in the uh, two critical categories. One is debt per capita, and the other is the, uh, what they call it the angelic, I think, the adjusted net, net grant list per capita. Um, that those rankings, in addition to the rankings of the current expenditures for people, are a pretty good indicator of where we are relative to our peers and for 